All right, what's going on YouTube? It's like day three of working on this car. Interesting turn of events from day two, seafoaming the car. Car is running a lot better. It usually starts within first crank. Today I came outside and started the thing because I wanted to turn it around. And I put some heat in the car, so or in the tank. So I wanted to like uh, warm the car up and I did. And a little bit more water came out. Obviously not as much as before. But the car did start off first try. I noticed the car is actually leaking fuel. So that's going to be one of the first things that I try to fix today. So check it out. Also, it uh, runs pretty good for like one sec. Then the ASR light comes on, which is pretty interesting. And the check engine lights back on, but I'm not entirely worried about that. I also think I can just uh, turn off the oil light. So when I back the car out, I'm gonna actually work on that real quick also. When I first pulled the car out, it ran like really good and I was gonna take it around the block and do some testing, but then the ASR light came on. Here's the gas on the ground. It actually doesn't leak too much. I think that's probably water, but that's gas and oil or something right there. Hasn't been leaking a lot. Cars, I don't know, it doesn't leak a lot. That's definitely gas, so I'll show you. All right, so if we look up under here, you can see the, the cover for the fuel is not there. You can see there's fuel right there and of course this is already all dry but i mean you can see fuel residue on the contacts right here i'm not trying to get fuel just like in my face but yeah i don't know if i want to start the car to see it where the fuel is leaking from oh man working upside down sucks but so since there's fuel right here this is the only thing pointing towards it when i first came under here it was wet right here so i think i'm gonna go get a I'm gonna get, figure out how to take this thing off first without squirting water in my, or not water, but. Man, is this focused? Okay, so I'm gonna try and find a hose uh, clamp, like hose clamp like this, go on right here, cause I think this is letting uh, gas through. I mean, I would start it and lay under here and let gas pour right in my eyes so you guys can get a better picture. But you see how it's wet right there and right here? And it's not wet really, it's not wet back here, even though this looks like it's kind of old. This looks like it's mega old, but see how this is like, like dirty, it has like dust on it and shit. It's not leaking from right there. It's definitely leaking from right here. This also looks new. So many new parts in this car and they couldn't figure it out, but um, hopefully I figured it out. So one time Depot got a hose clamp. Looking at this more, let me try and show you it. This is just too loose for, uh, I mean, it rocks back and forth, see how you can turn it. I'm not sure if it's split or what, but like this hose clamp isn't working. So, I mean, it doesn't seem to be leaking right here, but it also looks to be a lot tighter. So I might want to buy another filter and or at least take this one off and see if something disgusting pours out of it. It's definitely full of fluid. And I think this runs to this hard line and it goes like, uh goes like right into the gas thing or something might be returned i don't even know i'm gonna get into this okay so i'm actually mega pissed right now that was actually way more annoying than i could have possibly imagined and i'm also fairly certain that it's not totally fixed but i have a new hose clamp on it to get the old one off i had to if i could ever find it i had to completely destroy it like these are, I guess, designed so idiots like me can't get them off, but I did it. So I have a new hose clamp on. It's like mega tight, but the unfortunate thing is I do not think it is tight enough because I can still barely move it. So yeah, but new hose clamp on. I'm gonna try and tighten it down a little bit more. All right, so time to see if it still leaks gas. I'm not sure if it'll start with uh, how much gas came out. I got gas literally all over me. <laughs> It's interesting how the ASR just totally kills the car. I'm gonna rub it a couple times, see if any gas can uh, leak out of the thing.
Doesn't look like we have any gas leak right now. All right, so another problem I'm having with the car is the front auxiliary fans. So what I, by what I know, low speed is supposed to come on at 80, 83 degrees Celsius, and then high speed still auxiliary is supposed to come on at 107 degrees Celsius. So these are the relays to the auxiliary fans. You can actually, I'll show you one sec. All right, so this is how I know that the fans work. This is, I think the low, might be high speed, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see in a second. I took the cap off and put the fuse back in. You can try and make sure that your fuse isn't blown, but these resistors just do not, it's just not common for them to just totally give out. Like all it does is that, you know, the spring works, nothing's burnt inside. So I'm gonna stick this thing back in, not really hard or far, but like, just like on. You don't even have to have the car on. I think that's high speed. So I'm just clicking right here. That's with the car off. So I know the fans work. Like I'm manually turning them on. The problem is I just don't know where along the sequence the it's just not telling it to turn on. I read somewhere online that this, whatever this is, could be part of the problem, but it looks like it goes into the air conditioner. So I don't really want to mess with that. Someone else, the same guy also said that it was like, this thing could be bad, but I took a look and it doesn't look bad. And then also uh, like this resistor right here, something is to like the, it tells it to click on or something. I have absolutely no idea. But so I know the fans work, I wish I could figure out how to make them work by themselves or automatically. Okay, so I forgot I was YouTube and I took this ballast out and tried to like clean that coil right there. I guess this ballast is for the fans. I showed you guys that the fans turn on. I was putting it back together and then I dropped this bolt right here down in, yeah, you guys can't see it. It's like, It's like over there, but yeah, I forgot I was YouTube and I'm not sure if this ballast has any difference. I'm kind of miffed that uh, I can turn the fans on, but the fans won't automatically turn on. I'm still trying to figure it out. All right, just knock something out and there it is. I swear if I drop this thing again, I'm gonna be pissed. So I guess I better like do it on video. Oh man, that was close. I must be like the most inept friggin' mechanic there ever was. But I go from working on nothing to working on SL500, so I don't know what I expect. So after messing with and putting back on the auxiliary fan ballast right here, I tried cleaning it, sprayed uh, electronic parts cleaner on it. It's just a spring, like the wires go to it. I'm not sure if the wires are bad. So here's the low speed. I just tested the high speed on video the low speed right now. So yeah, the low speed works, the high speed works. I just, I don't know, you know? I guess it has to be a wiring problem. Okay, so after messing with the fans and making sure they worked, I did more looking at forums and stuff. I learned that you can actually read codes in the AC unit. Did these codes the first time I read them. I read these. These were the temperature sensors, so I saw they were working. It even says, like, I don't know. It's sort of weird. It doesn't say much, too much useful information. But then there is this diagnostic test mode. So you turn the ignition switch to on and then press, what is it? Degrees Fahrenheit, recirculate, and rest at the same time for two to four seconds, 10 seconds after turning the car on. So we have the car on. I'm going to press these three, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. And so now this is the diagnostic test thing, Majang, and this thing blinks so you know you're in it. Here's more on that. And then you can delete the codes by uh, turning ignition on and within 10 seconds, press and hold Recirculate, rest, and up. So recirculate, rest, and up. These three right there. 
and you can delete the codes. And I already deleted the codes. These were the original codes that were on this test right here. So I had in-car temperature sensor, open circuit, outside temperature sensor, open circuit, auxiliary coolant pump, open circuit, AC compressor signal, open circuit, auxiliary fan signal, second stage, open circuit, auxiliary fan, blah, 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 open circuit. So that could answer all my questions if only I could understand it, which probably means there is a wire that is open, but so if I go through, it goes to end. And here's another thing. I don't know if they're just stored codes. So this is like the second series of codes, which would be these codes right here. So if you look again, you make with it what you want. But when I go through these codes again, it says no stored codes. So I'm not sure if the codes that were there were just stored because they didn't come back after running the car for a while. But so then after you go through the codes, it shows all your sensors. Like that one's reading 29 degrees Celsius. This one's reading 33. What it's doing right here, O2 in-car temperature sensor, O4 outside, O6, you can read it yourself. When I originally read this, this is when the car got up to 100 degrees Celsius or whatever, and the, uh, the temperature sensor wasn't reading, so like the coolant was hot, should have been wanting to run. And then 16, 18, 20, those are just like, for some odd reason, it's the, the direction of that, which is like, why do you even need to know that? These last ones, 22, 24, and 26, are the same type nonsensical thing but so you can go through them yourself that one's reading 32 08 30 12 50 that's coolant temp i don't know i guess that's close 12 50 degrees these are the nonsensical ones and then you get to the end and it does the end to the second degree or whatever flashing and then you know you're done. The only way to get out then is to turn the car off. And then we're back at 70 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, I don't know. I need to look more into that. Again, if I turn the car on, read the codes, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, we're back in the codes. There is no stored codes for the coolant system. So I'm not sure. Now, where did I find this? On some forum, but you could probably type in diagnostic, Mercedes diagnosis, diagnostic trouble codes, DTC memory, air conditioner. I mean, hopefully you can get to it from there. This is from like a online Mercedes manual. This is free. It was only these couple pages. So now we're done with that again. It's interesting when you turn the car on, it says no codes. Starts pretty good, has a check engine light, but then boom, goes into ASR and then the car hates you. All right, so these are the new codes for today. Some of them deleted, some of them didn't. This is a new one, which I don't understand. Once the code is read, it then goes to an open circuit and you can't delete it. So it's like not glowing. You can read the code. After the code is read, it glows the light. Then when you plug it back in, you can read the next code, but it doesn't delete. I'm gonna have to look more into these codes tonight. So starting the car again after reading the codes. Wow, now ABS is back on. That's great. It's running absolutely worse than it was earlier. This is just very interesting. Maybe it is actually a wiring, lower wiring harness problem and I just can't fix it or something. All right, so these are all the codes that I had again today. I'm gonna go through them all actually right now. Page 21 starts, we got code 22, pin four. Pin four is a uh, fuel system. We got oxygen sensor heater open or short circuit, okay. Next code, pin, pin six, code 30, page 54. 
ASR only can date bus control module interrupted. Interesting. We're going to go to pin 7, code 14. It's also the CAN signal. So remember this. ASR, CAN, whatever. We're going to go to 30, page 39. We got closed throttle position switch and 7, number 14, closed throttle position contact switch. Interesting. We need to look at that probably some more. We got those standard codes, we'll get back to them. And then we have new, page 65. We have 9 and 12. Something about the front door. Interesting, when I would read the code earlier, it would read and then I wouldn't be able to delete it because it would be an open circuit right after reading the code. Like it would blink right after blinking. It would then be in open, like the light would be on. So it would be an open circuit. So the door probably has frayed wires or something or another. And then last we have the pin 19, the standard six, seven and 12. This is gonna be page 26. Idle speed control faulty, ignition system faulty, and then again the oxygen sensor. I'm really needing to look into the oxygen sensor. That could be why it goes into limp mode on start. But yeah, I thought I'd go through the codes one more time. All right, so mega wild. I just had dinner and a brain blast and was on some forums and they were saying that uh, throttle or like the accelerator pedal or the uh, brake pedal can throw the ASR light. But my ASR, ASR light wasn't coming on until it would like idle for a second. So more reading. I found a forum post on adjusting this thing, which I can't understand because I can't read that kind of plain jargon, not make much sense or really straightforward, ununderstandable stuff. But so I readjusted this. I don't know if you can tell from earlier videos, but this is way more pulled in. I also try to adjust the shifter but yeah, it just doesn't want to do shifts. But so after adjusting the throttle, this is in the right position now because when I turn the car on, mega wild. All the lights work, yeah. It's still not running the best. I think the gas or something's bad, but like, Oh my goodness gracious, no check engine light, no VS, no ASR. That is incredible, without replacing one module. So I'm going to probably go to the gas station right now and put some high octane gas in it to see if I can do anything. Also the gas light was just on and now it's off. I guess it's just making gas at this point. But yeah, I drove around the block and... Before I go to the gas station, actually, I'm gonna delete the codes, but man, happy as heck right now. All right, so I drove to the gas station to get some gas. Weirdly, when I first restarted the car after I decided to clear the codes, when I cleared the codes, the ASR and ABS light came back on, but then I turned the car off immediately and turned it back on and the codes were then gone. So, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna put some good gas in it and see what happens. Oh man, I had to go pawn my friggin' dog to uh, get gas. This is ridiculous. I, I don't know, I just can't. They just make up a number and then we pay for it and then pawn my friggin' dog. All right, so gas gauge is a little bit above quarter. I'm not filling up much more because I think I'm in here to replace a fuel filter and I know I'm gonna lose gas doing that. When I tried to put a new uh, hose clamp on today, I lost a lot of fuel, got fuel all over my arm. I'm surprised my skin isn't doing as bad as it is, but like, yeah, I don't know. We'll get it on the road and see how it behaves. All right, so I'm gonna try and give it the beans while not uh, totally wrecking the thing. See, this is put to the floor. It's just not as fast as it should be. I mean, it's pretty quick, but like, not what it should be. I think uh, the O2 sensor is totally bad, but yeah. Also, I need an alignment on this thing. I think the U-Haul trailer like torqued up the steering or something, but fourth gear now. 
reason. Also, I need to figure out why these fans aren't turning on. That's like a huge problem. I hit the car warming up and stuff, but today was pretty eventful. I got gas all over me. There's no uh, ABS and ASR light. If I turn off the lights, that light's gone. Um, yeah, I need to figure out what the oil light is. Hopefully it's not an oil level sensor or something because I think the oil pan needs to come off for that and these oil pans don't come off easy. But thank you for watching. Have a good day.